it costs a lot of money to go to Dubai. Why are people eating like outside at a restaurant? They're eating like almost like they're eating dinner. What's happening? Excuse me, dark alley, where's my pistol? It was a little bit terrifying. Girl, come to find out I was eating buffalo, like a buffalo, like buffalo bills. I was like, excuse me? Wait, mm -mm. one more time. Take it back, bring it back. Hey, good. And then I also know, bonjour. <laughs> I know that. What up, Wagwan? It's the saying, it's your girl, Minandivia, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you 40 different points, tips, tricks, observations, the whole nine yards when it comes to traveling to Dubai that I think that you need to know. If you have not already, I want you to watch parts one, two, and three of my Dubai vlog. Like, it was just amazing. You just have to watch all of that. But this video is gonna give you a recap of many, many points that I think are important to know if you've never traveled to Dubai, plan on doing it if you have already, and perhaps it was a long time ago, some things have changed, a lot of it is all new to me. Either way, let's talk about it. If you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed here, follow me on Instagram and on TikTok, cause your girl is new on TikTok or whatever, because when I'm not here, I am there. So make sure you do that and also comment, because I wanna know if you've ever been to Dubai or if you plan on going to visit. All right, first point is it is absolutely breathtaking. Dubai is amazing. Now, my sister and I took my mom to Dubai. It was on her list of places that she wanted to go. She's obviously a lot older. She's been retired and we just want to spoil her. So we were like, mom, go ahead and write down a bunch of places that you want to go and then we'll do our best to take you there. So Dubai was the first place and we had a, an absolute amazing time. It was for her birthday. It was amazing. So we went in February and I wasn't looking forward to it because it wasn't my trip. You know how if I plan something like a Mexico or like or whatever um, I'm excited to go I wasn't because this wasn't for me but I was blown away at how amazing beautiful just outstanding Dubai is it is definitely a place that I feel like everyone needs to go and if you haven't already you need to go Listen, the architecture is outstanding. All the buildings are just ginormous. They're in, in shapes that I've never seen before. It's just brilliant. The companies that, that build these buildings, they're just outstanding. They're just, un, for me, never seen before type of buildings. So that to me was just so eye-opening and just awe-inspiring. Just all the adjectives that I could think of all describe the trip and just the way, the lay of the land. Granted, you have some places that are not as developed as others, but in general, the architecture is outstanding. Now, the thing about Dubai is that it is expensive, honey. I mean, you know, I'm used to and very much do love an all-inclusive vacation, baby. I'm talking about flight, hotel, and food, and beverages, okay? This is not that kind of a trip, right? We paid for the flight and hotel through Expedia, and everything else was cash money, and it was expensive. When I look back at everything, it costs a lot of money to go to Dubai, okay? Flight and hotel was about $700, and my sister and I paid for my mom, so we split, that, we split it by two instead of three but everything else outside of that costs a lot of money like I think that I spent mm, close to a thousand dollars outside of that we'll get into some more details in a little bit when it comes to money I did not think that I needed to exchange too much of my dollars to Durham, which is their money. So I exchanged maybe $300 of it and we used all of it because what we found was that many times, and I get it, the taxi drivers wanted their money or they wanted cash, but it was like, mm -mm, I'm gonna give you Durham because $1 I think is three Durham. So it's like, no, don't try to play me. If I don't have change and I give you a little extra, no thank you. So we did change our money into Durham, a good amount of our money, but it came to a point where we were just like, damn, we should have done more because many times the drivers did not want to use their credit card machine. They had the machine, honey, but they didn't want to use it. And I don't blame them. They didn't want to get the, the penalties and the, and the fees and stuff. But it's like, yo, transfer the fee over to me because I wanted to use my card because I wanted to get travel points. And I, like I said, didn't change all of my money into Durham. So there were times where it was like, dang, and I guess we should have changed more. So just FYI there, you can use cash, you can use Durham, you can use your card, but it might come to a point where you feel like, yo, I should have had more Durham than I than I initially changed at the airport. I suppose we could have changed it elsewhere in the city, but we just didn't feel like it, so we didn't. The one thing about Dubai is you definitely can and should negotiate with sellers. So. <laughs> 
not like in proper stores. Like if you're in a proper store, no. But like if you're at like a, you know, kind of a store, then of course, it almost reminds me of Canal Street. It reminds me of even just being in Mexico, for instance, on the beach and you have sellers that are selling things. Go ahead and negotiate. No need for you to pay all your money unless you just want to give it away. But definitely you want to try to do a little bit of negotiation. I do feel like that is called for depending on where you are and what you're buying, like for sure. Now we did go to the Musk. The whole trip was planned by Expedia. My sister is a very, very great travel preparer and so am I too, but she took a lead because she's been to Dubai five years ago. We did do a day trip to Abu Dhabi, booked through Expedia and we went to the Musk, which was amazing. Again, if you have not seen my vlogs, you have to watch them. It was so fun. Now at the Musk, what she remembers five years ago is that they provided the abaya for us, which is the head to toe outfit and then the head wrap, but for them it's a hoodie that they give you for free for free to wear. We did not realize, and it makes so much sense that they no longer do that because of COVID. So there were no free, or not free, but I think you rented it for $15. That was no longer an option. When you go into the Musk, she explained how this area was all brand new. It looks like a mall basically attached to the Musk, which is uh, just beautiful. And in there you have some vendors, stores, not like, you know, kiosks, like actual stores where they sell the Abaya and you'll see lots of different styles, expensive versions, affordable versions, and I was tempted to get this pink one that had all these beautiful detailed rhinestones on them and stuff. But then later it was just like, you know what? Am I gonna wear this again realistically in the US? No. So I didn't get that. My sister already had one from that from the when she went before. So two of us. So the two of us ended up buying the affordable one. It was about $13 and I forget how many dirham it was. We bought that. It came with a hoodie. It was just annoying because I had braids and it's not like the hoodie tied or anything. So it kept falling and you could see my hair and you absolutely cannot show any hair. I'm a Christian so I'm not familiar with this custom at all. You can't show any hair at all. Like even when my braids were showing in the back a little bit, I felt so uncomfortable because the people who were there kept saying, excuse me, excuse me, tuck your hair in. So, you know, there was that. So the hoodie thing was big. It's different if you were to have a hijab, is that what you call it? Where you wrap your head and then wrap the neck. That way you can ensure that no hair is showing. I had butt length braids, honey. So it was a little bit of a problem, but we made it work, we made it do. It just was what it was, but you can no longer rent the abaya from the musk you get it from the stores downstairs attached to the musk or you can bring your own clothes like i saw people and i was like oh that makes more sense just wear long sleeves and wear pants and you're good so you could also do that out and of course you need to have the hijab so you can buy a scarf from there or bring your own so you could do either of those things And for number eight, I already touched on the fact that the taxis do prefer durham over the credit card because they don't want to pay the fee okay Number nine is back to it being expensive. Things do add up. So of course we're staying at a hotel and if you wanna go around Dubai and explore different places you are going, to have to pay to get there. And the taxis and the Ubers are expensive. You would think, oh, it's an Uber, so it's a set fee. Let me just hop in here. But many times when we plug in the address and the Uber would say, price is two times higher because of blah, blah, blah. So stuff was really far and all that stuff adds up, like easily $50 to get somewhere and then to come back, all of that. So if you're going with other people, sure, when you split it or if you take turns paying for the taxis and the Ubers, it won't be as bad perhaps, but it was two of us It's still, it was like, like, yo, we were there for four nights and it just adds up, yo. It adds up and then also to get into places, to do things like dinner in the sky, like going to Abu Dhabi, like all the other things that we did and I'll, I'll touch on a few of those in a second. It just all adds up, okay? So it's more than just, oh, I'm gonna just pay for my flight in hotel and go to Dubai. It's like, no, unless you're gonna stay in your hotel at the pool or if you stay at a hotel with the beach, because if you're gonna stay there, sure, it won't cost you that much, I suppose, outside of your food. Food, but if you actually want to do things, go places, buy stuff, you need to have some cha-ching, baby. Number 10 is that it is safe all hours of the day is my understanding. So in the first vlog you saw on the first night, it was midnight and I was thinking, why are people eating like outside at a restaurant? They're eating like almost like they're eating dinner. What's happening? And the driver was like, oh yeah, Dubai is basically 24 hours and it's very safe. There's no crime or maybe there's a, like little to no crime. And I believe the penalties for crime are very harsh. I don't know, but it was just so intriguing that you could go grocery shopping or do whatever in the middle of the night. I don't know about whatever. I mean, I can't imagine you get a passenger up in the middle of the night. You know what I'm like, saying? Yeah, I can't imagine you can you go to the dentist, you know, at 4 a.m. But I'm just saying like stores were open and people were walking around in 
dark alleys. And you know, here in the US, it's like, excuse me, dark alley, where's my pistol? No, it didn't feel like that at all. I asked questions, I'm like, these women walking around, they're not afraid with the children? No, it's very safe, apparently. So I think that that is fantastic, that you could be in a city like Dubai and just be out at any hour and be, you know, around and not have to feel afraid, even as a woman or a young lady or what have you. And I have to say, even with us three, we never ever felt unsafe. Granted, we weren't out in the middle of the night, but still, we never ever felt unsafe at all. It did feel safe. It's just odd to feel like things don't really shut down. It just, it felt like, <laughs> what? Like, what do you mean? Now, like I said, one of the days we did go to Abu Dhabi for a day trip and Abu Dhabi is breathtaking. You go to Dubai, you have to go to Abu Dhabi. It's just gorgeous. Again, that's where the mosque was. That is where we had the desert safari and we went around the town. We went to this place to eat. I can't think of the name. It's in the vlog. It was delicious. The place is beautiful. We also passed by, was it the king or some royalty in Abu Dhabi, like the street where it was where all the royalty lived. I can't explain it. All I know is it was a long street. Both ends looked like castles. I mean, it was just fantastic. I'm, again, it, nothing I've ever seen in my life. Just to think at what the Lord can do through the hands of man. How do people make such structures? It is just breathtaking. So Abu Dhabi is definitely a place to go visit. I mean, I feel like you need to see both places, you know? It was so, so good. Now, let me tell you, we did go in February and February is cold, okay? We're talking 60s in the morning and the evening, 70s during the day. So when you go somewhere in the morning time, it's it's a little nippy. It ain't like a scarf and, and you know, Ugg boots and gloves, but <laughs> when you pack your summer outfits and you have on your shorts or your two piece or your whatever, and it's 9 a.m. and you catch on a ride to where have you, it's uncomfortable because you're like, oh my gosh, this is really windy, I feel cold. But as the hours go on and the, the day warms up, you will feel warm. But it is generally, to them I believe, that's their cold season, which I found to be very pleasant because think about it, this is Dubai. It would be sweltering, dangerous levels of heat in the summertime, so I would never go to Dubai in the summertime. I actually think it's great to go in February. So just a tip there, I'm letting you know right now, if you've been to Dubai in the dead of the summertime, then let me know. It's like here in Houston, right? You wanna come to Houston in July? You better be ready to be suffering. All this suffering, you suffer for me. Yeah, yeah, you be suffering, actual suffer. And I don't want you to do that. So I do recommend February. I wouldn't say like November and December because I think it's actually literally quite cold at that time. February though was more pleasant. You know, you can deal with it. So on the same day that we went to Abu Dhabi was the desert, red, is it de red sand desert? Something, we went to the desert, okay? And <laughs> oh my God. First of all, you have to go to the desert. I think everyone goes to the desert in Dubai, honey. You gotta go to the desert. You gotta do dune bashing. We didn't do the ATVs because we just didn't feel like it. And actually we saw somebody in the little convenience store busted up, bleeding, and we're like, oh yeah, see, that's why I'm not gonna do it. It was just so nice to be in the desert. It was evening time, so there wasn't much daylight to ride, just like to see everything, but we were able to see it during the day, especially for the dune bashing. But then it got to evening, we read, read, rode the camel and then watched the belly dancing show, the fire show. It was great. The food was not amazing. It was cold. The food was not good at the desert, okay? But the experience at the desert was so, so nice. You gotta go to the desert. You gotta hold the, the birds. You gotta take the pictures in the sand dunes. You gotta do all of that, you know? They're just things that I feel like when you go to Dubai, you have to do. And that's what I mean by it's expensive because it all adds up. Another expensive thing, dinner in the sky, honey. Dinner in the sky was so phenomenal. I will never ever forget it. My mom was so brave on the camel and also dinner in the sky. I mean, you, it was a little bit terrifying. Like you can't look down because you look down, you might like, you, you feel like you're gonna flip over, but you're not gonna flip over. It's a crane that picks up the contraption that's holding us. I can't explain it. Watch the vlog, you'll see. It is phenomenal. It costs $200 a person. So that's what I mean by it's so expensive that you're like, excuse me, the food was okay. The food wasn't fantastic. It wasn't Maestro's, it wasn't Eddie V's. It was just okay. We were more so just taken aback by the, 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 the view and the experience that that was what we were loving the entire time. It was content, 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 content. I wasn't even hungry, okay? I was just so happy to be there that that's all I cared 
cared about. I was more so like video, pictures, capture, capture. That's really what it was for us, honest to God. It wasn't the food. The food was okay. Like, don't go there hungry. <laughs> I mean, at least we didn't, you know? And number 15, Jumeirah Beach. I believe that was in Abu Dhabi, right? I get confused. I think that was Abu Dhabi. Wait, no, no, hold on, hold on. No, that wasn't Abu Dhabi. Oh my gosh. It all looks the same. It all looks so great. That wasn't Abu Dhabi. That was Dubai. Okay, Jumeirah Beach is in Dubai. If I'm wrong, correct me. Comment, let me know. But it is in Dubai. And I believe there was a hotel called Palms something. It was phenomenal. You can tell it's pricey, but it looks fantastic. We definitely want to go back and stay there and then chill at the beach because now that we've gone and done all the great things, I'm sure there's more, I'm sure there's more, but done so many great things in Dubai. When I go again, I'm not gonna to want to go and do all this again. I want to go to the beach. It looked beautiful. It just looks so nice, you know? Like it's just, it looks Look different like I need to go to the beach okay so Jamira Beach you definitely want to either stay there stay near there or go visit there we didn't go to the beach we were too busy going to all these places we were busy every single day from morning till night and I mean like night night we did not have many breaks there were so many things we wanted to do places we wanted to go and it's just like ugh, there was no time to go lay at the beach but next time definitely go and do the beach okay Now number 16, honey, was the exclusive yacht, baby. You gotta go on a yacht. If you know me, I love a good yacht, honey. I did this cute reel on IG that I loved. It was so nice. Y'all loved that white two-piece set that I wore from Shein. The yacht was bomb and it wasn't even expensive. Again, that was through Expedia. We almost missed it, yo. We were, oh my gosh. Traffic and then by the time we left the hotel, all this and that, we almost missed the yacht, honey. We were the last ones to board. It was so nice. There were not many of us, the vibes were vibing it was giving vibes on vibes the area where we did the yacht was so beautiful this huge ferris wheel the the hotels the buildings it just i don't remember the name of the area it was just so breathtaking everything is breathtaking i cannot explain that anymore i cannot even think of another word to use it just was breathtaking the yacht was so nice and relaxing the folks were nice we didn't have to wear our mask thank god because it was like yo we're on a yacht the wind is blowing like leave us alone a little bit you know give us a little space you know and it was very, very chill. And the workers, they were very nice too, helping us with pictures and content. You know what I'm saying? They wanted that tip. They wanted that tip or whatever, and I don't blame them. You know what I'm saying? And number 17, just all in all, like I said, I touched on it before, customer service was really, really good. The hotel customer service was on point. You know, we're not waiting forever to get things. They were very nice. Just in general, all around, everyone was very respectful. I can't think of anything that was bad. I can't think of anything that was irritating or inconvenient. So that is, that's a good sentiment to have when you go to a different country to be like, yo, customer service was on point. It's not like here where you go to a hotel and it's like, hello, can I get another iron? Hello, can I get another iron? Hi, can you give me another iron? I called 30 minutes ago. Like, no, it wasn't like that. It was very prompt. It was just good. So for number 18, the strange thing, it's not strange, it's just strange to me. No offense to anybody, obviously because in the US we don't have or do this, were the water hoses in the bathroom. So obviously it's customary to rinse up after the bathroom, but we don't do that here. So it was very jarring. I was like, oh, wow, okay. And I wanted to give it a try, but then when we were out in public, every bathroom had the hose. What I didn't like is that the floors were always flooded. So perhaps it was foreigners <laughs> like me who didn't know how to quite use it or maybe the water pressure was too high, too hard, but there were puddles in all the public bathrooms. So when you walk in and you have on floor length pants, you gotta hold them up, okay? Because you don't know if it's urine or if it's water, but the, there's water on the floor and it's like, yo, it's gotta, maybe it's from that water hose and people are just using it and they're spraying their whole bodies, getting a whole, getting a whole shower in the bathroom. I can't be doing that. Not in public, not, not even in the, in the hotel. Why, you know? So I never used it, but it was very intriguing to see, you know what I'm saying? I just could not give myself a bath, you know, in public. I just, you know, I wasn't there for that. You get what I'm saying? I, I did the bath in the in the hotel room, pretty the same. So it's a little confusing for me. Gave me something to think about. And I was very confused, very perplexed by the whole hosing of the body in the public natures of society. And I was, was just a little unsure of the hosiery not hosiery that we wear under dress, but hoses, hose, that. 
Number 19, oh my goodness. So at the Dubai Mall, which I felt like never closed, we went at night and I don't know when it closed, but it was fantastic. Definitely a tourist area. They did this water fountain show. I don't know how to explain it. Oh, it was so beautiful. We paid to go on a boat and watch the show from the boat. So romantic. Very affordable too. And it was such a great idea that we did that. It was so phenomenal. Like it was just nice to be on the water and then watch the water display. Like the water going up and down and up and down and then the buildings and then the Burj Khalifa right there and it's all lit up, you know, tallest building in the whole world. It was just phenomenal. You gotta go to Dubai Mall. You gotta go watch the water fountain show. You do the water fountain show in the boat. You feel what I'm saying? It, it's, it's totally a sight to see, honestly. Now, let me tell you, the first night that we got there, your girl ordered buffalo wings. I was starving, like I said, it was midnight, okay? And we went to the hotel, we said the Hyatt Regency, Dubai, and the hotel bar was open, so we got some food, I ordered buffalo wings. Honey, child. First, the man was like, yeah, buffalo wings, and I was like, Okay, yeah, buffalo wings, all right, and a salad, right? So it comes and he puts it down. I'm like, mm, these look dark, you know, like dark. Buffalo wings are not dark, they're usually red. So I was like, okay, but I was starving. So I just started eating. I was like, mm, this is sweet. So it just tore up my whole keto, right? I was like, dang it, this is sweet. What in the world? And I was like, hold on, is there barbecue sauce on here? And the guy's like, yes. I'm like, you didn't say that. Buffalo wings have barbecue sauce in Dubai? Aren't those barbecue wings? Okay, fine. But then I was like, this, these chicken pieces look different. What is this? And it even tastes a little bit different. Girl, come to find out, I was eating buffalo. Like a buffalo. Like buffalo bills. I was like, excuse me? Am I eating a buffalo? Like, buffalo soldier. Do 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 do. rasta. I'm eating buffalo. Excuse me, sir. You didn't tell me this. Now, maybe, maybe I should have known this because I was in a different country. <laughs> I thought that buffalo wings was the same all over, but it turns out that like in different countries call it different things. So when he was giving this gesture, <laughs> I don't know if he was referring to the arms of a buffalo. <laughs> so did you give me arms? Did you give me limb by limb, we I go cut them down? You know that song, the Jamaican song? Did you give me limb by limb? I was so confused, concerned, didn't know what to do, but I was starving. So I ate as many buffalo pieces as I could. And then I just said, oh dear God, I hope I don't have a stomach ache. Thank God nothing happens to me, but I was like, what is this? And why was this not clear? Oh, and 21 girl, you ain't gonna find you some alcohol. We, I did not have alcohol day one tonight. I, I did not at the, at the hotel bar. I mean, it is a bar for God's sake, but in your room, no alcohol. Well, no, it was in the, in the fridge. Was it? We didn't look in the fridge, but my sister tried to order a pina colada and they said that it, it couldn't come with alcohol, it had to be a virgin. But then the day before we did get an alcoholic pina colada. So I don't know, but in general, it's none of the restaurants. It's like, it's not out and about apparently. So there's that, you know, to think about. If you are trying to go there and turn up, I don't know. I think she said five years ago when she went, you had to be at the clubs at night to get a drink. I don't know, but it's not just easily accessible as you would access it here in the US. You know, when you go eat and stuff like that? No, not in our experience at least. 22, oh my goodness, the flight was exhausting. So it's 14 hours, we did seven to Paris, and then we had a layover in Paris. That was intentional because we wanted to go to Paris, so watch the vlog to see how that went. So it was seven to Paris, seven in Paris, and then seven to Dubai, girl, a whole day, okay? And then to come back, it was seven, and then we were in Amsterdam a few hours, and then, so to come back, was it shorter? I don't know. It just was such a long, long flight. My sister five years ago did it nonstop. That I cannot imagine, so I do have to say, that having a layover is good because I can't stand long flights. I mean, I knew I had to just deal with it for the trip. I was actually starting to get a little bit anxiety thinking about it because I just can't stand long flights, but I may do, we went, we came back. It was well worth it, but it's long, baby. Just be ready, it is so long. And just FYI for number 23, we went to the Emirates. So the United Arab Emirates, UAE, and we visited two of the Emirates. So Dubai is an Emirate and so is Abu Dhabi. There are a few others. So the way it was explained to me is that the Emirates, you can think of it like states. So you have the US and then you have Texas, 
Oklahoma, whatever, Alabama, whatever. You have the UAE and then you have the Emirates like Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and I can't think of the other ones. Just a, you know, just a little history lesson for the kid. For 24, the accommodations for a handicap are really, really good. And that starts really from the airplane. So because with my mom, who is 67 years old, two knee replacements, arthritis, all kinds of pains and aches, we had the handicap accommodations from beginning to the entire end. And then everywhere that we went, I mean, it was clear that she needed assistance and people were very, very helpful with the transportation in San Miracle Garden, the guy that was driving us around from, I mean, just everywhere we went, it was very clear that she needed help. So we did get the help that we needed when we were out places. Even the yacht, we were running so behind and you had to walk down the pier, come onto the boat, and they saw my mom dragging her legs, honey, and they knew they had to just wait a second, you know what I'm saying? And they did that, they did just that. And they were very gracious helping her get up into the boat and so forth. So the nice thing is if you do plan on going with someone in your family who is handicapped, then you will have the help that you need to help that person enjoy their time. Like the camel, right? The camel obviously goes down. I was watching my mom like I was her mom, okay? So so I helped her on the camel and blah, blah, blah. But if you're traveling with someone that is handicapped, you still can do a lot of things. And what I'm saying is that the people there are just very, very helpful. One thing that was so surprising was that there was a border, obviously, between Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and a guard, a police officer, someone, and he was checking all of our PCR test results. I was like, wow, I mean, so you had to carry with you, granted ours was electronic, but I was like, what? You need, to, you need to verify the PCR test results before going from Dubai to Abu Dhabi. I was like, oh my goodness, even in Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi went there, I was like, wow, okay. So, you know, they're taking it very seriously, granted, I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but in 2022, February, that's what happened. And I was like, oh, okay, interesting. We have it. So, you know, there's no issue there, but they, they were very, very serious about that. So for number 26, when it comes to masks, you do have to wear them in public and in any of the taxis, Ubers, so forth. But then obviously once you're sitting down eating, you can take it off. But again, when you're watching this video, maybe it's past all this mask stuff and you, know, you won't need it. Now, 27 is, everything is big. Like, Ferrari World was humongous. I mean, it was empty too. I was like, dang, do, do people even come here? Humongous. They were, they were building this aquarium in Abu Dhabi. It looks like it's gonna be humongous. Miracle Garden, the statues covered in flowers were ginormous. Back to my earlier point about the architecture, everything is just so huge and fascinating. Just absolutely fascinating. Now 28, back to the desert, it was cold, like I said, because evening time and morning time is like in the 60s, it was cold. And by that time it was nighttime. So that Abu Dhabi day tour is a long day. It is a very, very long day. And like I said, in Abu Dhabi, then there's an area where the red desert sand is that we went to, it is a full day. I mean, we got back mad late. It must've been like 10 o'clock, I think at night, nine, 10 o'clock. And it was really cold. And like I said, the food wasn't that amazing, okay? But the experience was very nice. And then of course, they're gonna try to sell you things. That's where you can do your negotiation. But then know that there are so many places that sell a lot of the same stuff, like the abaya, some of the jewelry, just like things, like trinkets and, and what have you. So if you're negotiating in one area and they're not budging to the price that you want, then you just hold off because you're gonna find vendors elsewhere too that are selling the same stuff, okay? Now, 29 is about cell service. Now, of course, you can go to any country and just rely on the Wi-Fi, but no, ma'am. I needed to be able to be in contact with home and also among us. Like if one of us goes to the bathroom, if we're here, you need to be able to text and say, hey, the car is leaving or where are you or meet us here or whatever. So being on cell service was important. So with AT&T, I had $10 a day international usage, whatever. So it was just an additional $10 a day, which was helpful because you need your phone. Not only for that, like you just need to be looking things up. Like you just need to know what's going on. You can of course use your maps to see where you are. You need you need your self-service, okay? At least for me. I'm not doing the whole Wi-Fi and then when I'm out in town, I don't have any service. That just doesn't feel safe to me. So I don't know what kind of self-service you have, but if you're going to Dubai and you're planning on sticking on Wi-Fi, you're gonna be SOL out in the town with no Wi-Fi, okay? 
And number 30, along with the Wi-Fi, you need it to access your currency converter app. So you definitely wanna have a currency converter app. I used, I think it's called currency converter, I don't know. And you need to access that because when you're places and you're trying to buy something and they say 35 dirham, you need to know how much that is, okay? Is that $10? Is that $13? How much is that? Because then in your mind you can say, okay, is this worth it, is it not? Otherwise, you don't know what you're paying for and you're just looking crazy. You need to be able to convert the currency even when it comes to the, to the taxis, just everything, the food. You wanna know like, is this a good deal? Is this a ripoff? Is this a whatever? And then if you need to, if it's appropriate, you can negotiate and go from there. 31, again with the phone, is Google Translate. There were only a few cases where we had a driver that did not know English very well, so having the app was very helpful. But otherwise, English is spoken among most people there, and you can get around not knowing Arabic. But having a Translate app is important because if you just get somewhere, you're talking to someone, they don't understand you, you can't understand them, it can be a hindrance. Like if you're trying to talk to your taxi driver and ask them a question or whatever, and they don't know what's going on, you don't know what's going on, like what is that? You know, like where are you and what are we doing? You need to be able to communicate. So the Google Translate app is key to have. And that also was helpful too in Paris because our taxi driver was so nice. He was giving us all the historical information as he drove us around, but there were some things that I could not understand. Like he was doing his best. You know how people will talk and you can just infer from what they're saying, what they're trying to say, and then you finish their sentences for them. There were times where I could not do that. So having the app was very helpful because I don't know French. You know what I'm saying? I took French four years in high school, but I was fooling around. I was not paying attention. You know what I'm saying? All I know is je m'appelle. Juju, wait, mm -mm. one more time. Take it back, bring it back. Je m'appelle Mina, right? My name is Mina. Hey, good. And then I also know bonjour. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh God. Mm -mm. That's it. Now, number 32 is that the gold is in abundance, but don't be thinking that because it's Dubai gold, it's gonna be cheaper, honey. Gold is gold. Gold is gold. And we learned that because my mom was so focused on getting gold when we went there. She wanted to get a gold necklace and a gold bracelet, but baby, when we were seeing them 18, 20, 22 karat gold prices, we were like, X. Excuse me, <laughs> come again please? Very expensive. And the color is so rich. It's so rich that it makes me feel like the gold is not real. It's like, wow, it's so orange, but it's 22 karat gold, you know? Or maybe it's Dubai gold, I don't know. It's just very unique. It's just very like, you know, just unique and, and just great. It's not gonna be cheap. It's not gonna be cheap. So if you're taking your mom, your auntie, you know, Nigerian, Ghanaian, Ghana for you. Oh, Meko Dubai, Meko Dubai, Meko gold. Okay, we'll quack. Because it's not gonna be something that's cheap. You're gonna have to pay for that, okay? It's gonna be a pretty penny. But she did get something, or two, did she get two things? She did get something, but <laughs> we were like, oh, okay, duly noted, you know, duly noted for next time. Now, for 33, like I said, we've used Expedia to book the whole entire trip and the different excursions. We like Expedia because we're used to it, we always use it, but if you prefer Orbitz or TripAdvisor or Travelocity, do we use that? I don't know. Do whatever you feel, but Expedia just made it a lot, just made it very, very easy when it came to the transportation from the hotel to the airport, back and forth, Abu Dhabi, Miracle Garden. During the sky might have been separate, but I can't remember, Sharita planned it, my sister, so I don't remember, but you could also go on the different sites for these different activities to book stuff, but it's just nice to just see stuff in one place, which for us was Expedia. Oh my gosh, so back to the mosque for a second, for 34, they had a machine that made fresh squeezed orange juice. I've never in my life seen such a thing. You gotta see it in the vlog. The oranges are there, then it gets sliced and squeezed and squeezed into the cup and then the machine puts the film on the cup like a boba tea and then you get a straw and you poke it in and drink it. Oh my gosh, divine. Divine, just fantastic. I just loved the fresh beverages, just so good. And also at Miracle Garden, they had, well, lemon mint, then they had strawberry juice and other different juices and you can mix them and buy them. So good, even the hotel had the lemon mint juice. Ah, it's like, this is just so refreshing. 
refreshing. I just love that. I tried a turmeric latte. Is that what it is? Yeah, turmeric latte. Whatever. I tried that. It was good. I was like, oh, I should make this at home. It was very, very good. It just feels very fresh and healthy and just delicious. Their rice is so just it's long grain rice. Ah, I enjoyed a lot of their food. There was one restaurant in Abu Dhabi, I don't know the name of it. I enjoyed a lot of their food. I was like, oh yes. It was just a few places. This was like, what is this one? That food, bomb. So at 36, when it comes to the traffic, make sure you are factoring that time in when you are booking your Uber or hopping in a taxi because girl, we were almost late for dinner in the sky. We were almost late for a few things, okay? Because we just didn't realize how bad the traffic could be depending on the time of day. Like it's just a problem. So make sure you factor in your time when it comes to that. And 37, girl, along with the Currency Converter app and the Google Translate app, you gonna need a world clock. Now, I didn't realize that the, the iPhone actually has it, but you can also download the world clock. You need that because we were 10 hours ahead in Dubai. So I had to be up at 2, 3 in the morning in order to talk to Nini when he, get, when he got out of school at 3, 4 p.m. So just imagine, right? The time is just like, oh my gosh, you need the world clock app to know what time it is back at your place. If you want to make a phone call, text message, whatever. I mean, it, it's just so, it, the time difference is insane. You need the world clock app to keep track of what's going on. Now, number 38, when it comes to the COVID test, which was required to go to Dubai, duh, right? PCR test results were required almost everywhere we went. And then to come back within 24 hours of our departure, we took a COVID test in the city, you'll see it in the vlog, and it was $40 a person to take the test. The hotel would do it, but it did charge, I think, $80, I'm not sure. And we were already gonna be in town that last day. So we were like, let's just go to the town clinic or hospital and then get the test there, which is what we did. And the test results came in a few hours. Number 39 is that the water in the hotel was free. I watched the Dubai vlog, granted it was from a year, few years ago, and they said that they had to pay for water everywhere they went. That wasn't the case. Thank God we had unlimited water bottles in the hotel, and that's always good because you need water, for God's sake. For me, I'm on keto, and I could not do keto in Dubai because on the airplane, honey, the food they were giving us was not even near keto. He who? There was no such thing as keto on the airplane, okay? And for that whole 24 hour travel thing that we did, there was just no way I was to just not eat right so water was in abundance it was very very necessary and that's really good and i thought i had 40 points but i feel like i added some extras in as we went along anyway so let's just call it 40 you see what i'm saying <laughs> that was a long video i'm glad that you watched all of it hopefully you found some tips to be helpful for you hopefully you learned a few things if you went to dubai and any of this is reminiscent for you, comment and let me know. If you are planning to go to Dubai, I want you to comment and let me know when you plan to go and what activities you plan on doing because it's just exciting to find out. And if you have any questions about the actual activities that we did, comment and let me know. Again, they're all in the vlogs, but if it's a quick question, I'm happy to answer it here in the comment section. In case you're wondering, this necklace, I think it's a Shein. This one is Amazon. This two-piece set is from Shein. I'll link it. My hair is just up in a bun. Earrings are Amazon. Lip is Icon from Huda Beauty. And that's it for the video. I'm gonna link two more for you here to watch because there is always an abundance of videos that you can watch, right? So no, no need for you to go any further. No need for you to go too far. Make sure you're subscribed and follow on Instagram and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching this one. Bye.